Hello everybody and welcome back to Bring Your Own Popcorn and welcome back to another top 10 list. Yeah, I've been wanting to do more top 10 lists on the channel recently and I thought because Halloween was coming up I would do a horror film uh, style top 10 list. But I've already done my top 10 favourite horror films so I was thinking what else could I do? So in today's video I'm go going to talk about the top 10, well my top 10 scariest movie scenes ever. So these are the 10 scenes in movie history that scare me the most. They could have kind of childhood memories to them, that's why it scares me, or they could be more recent horror films that I've seen that have managed to scare me as an adult. They could be absolutely anything. The only criteria is they must have scared the absolute living hell out of me. So without further ado, let's crack on with my number 10. So coming in at number 10, we have the first Nightmare from A Nightmare on Elm Street. A Nightmare on Elm Street was only a film that I really watched for the first time all the way through a few years ago. It was actually probably 2020, 2021, where I watched through the full franchise for the first time. But my first ever experience um, with the first A Nightmare on Elm Street movie was actually when I was a kid. Um, it was one of the first horror films I ever tried to watch. I tried to watch it with my dad and it got to this scene and I asked him very nicely if he could put it off because I was absolutely terrified. This scene is by far the scariest scene in the movie and probably the scariest scene in the full Nightmare franchise. The screen presence, or should I say scream presence, that um, Robert England as Freddy Krueger has on screen uh, during this scene is absolutely incredible. He is just absolutely horrifying and is the stuff that nightmares are made of. This scene is the first time that you properly see Freddy Krueger in the franchise and it is absolutely terrifying as it is iconic. The film before this scene has very successfully built up the tension and it just completely erupts in the first nightmare. And the practical effects and the body horror, and body horror is personally one of my favourite types of horror, um, it really just gets under my skin, um, is on full show here. It looks absolutely incredible and absolutely horrifying at the same time. So moving on to number nine, we have the sick sister from Pet Cemetery, and I'm talking the original Pet Cemetery, not the remake. Pet Cemetery was another really early horror film for me. I probably watched it when I was far too young. And it was this scene in particular that really got under my skin. The way the whole thing is filmed to give it this kind of dream-esque with this horrifying looking... <laughs> I don't even really know how to explain what she looks like. She just looks malnourished and terrifying and ill and just the stuff that your worst nightmares are made of. <laughs> Even when I watch the film now, the whole film doesn't really creep me out that much. I really like the film, but I, I, I do think the whole film isn't that scary, except for this one scene that really, really, really gets under my skin. I mean, just look at her. She is absolutely horrifying. Coming in at number eight, I don't think this is technically a horror film, so I may be cheating a little bit, but it is the sloth scene from the movie Seven. Um, again, this is another prime example of a film building up tension and really needing a place to unload that tension to kind of have a bit of payoff. Um, and it leads to easily one of the greatest and most scariest jump scares in movie history. Again, body horror is something that really, really creeps me out. And when they use practical effects to make these, this, this body horror just look ultra realistic, that's when I get scared. That is, that is when I get really, really freaked out. And this is one of the best examples of that happening. The way the sloth is designed is just absolutely horrifying and um, again it was another one that I watched when I was very young and overall the film didn't creep me out that much but this scene just sticks out in my head as giving me literal nightmares. 
I also think the set design of the creepy dark apartment really complements the aesthetic very well. So coming in at number seven is something that you guys might be very shocked is this low on the list. I think a lot of you probably are expecting this would be a lot higher, but it is The Exorcism from The Exorcist. So yeah, it is easily one of the most iconic pieces of horror in film history. And whilst it doesn't scare me as much as it does some people, it still really does get under my skin. The sequence just has loads of twists and turns. It isn't just your generic exorcism scene. Stuff keeps progressing. For example, the head turning, the vomiting, the floating. Everything just seems to be getting a little bit and a little bit and a little bit worse. Again, the way that Regan is designed with the makeup and the prosthetics and just the way she looks is horrifying itself and in the stuff that she does and the stuff that she says because of the demon inside her is just <laughs> terrifying. I also think the performances by the two people playing the priests really adds to this scene because you can tell that they are absolutely terrified as well and because those people who are meant to be people of authority people that you look up to people that aren't meant to get scared are terrified it helps make you terrified so yeah it is easily one of the most iconic pieces of horror cinema um and yeah it really really does get under my skin coming in at sixth place we have the apartment scene from saw this scene is so so good. I absolutely love this scene but it is absolutely terrifying. This scene is one of the best examples of building tension to a jump scare. I'm normally not a massive fan of jump scares when they are overused in horror films but when you build to one and then one is pulled off successfully I absolutely love it and this is one of the best examples of that. Just knowing something is there in this dark apartment and seeing little flashes of light when he takes pictures with the flash in his camera is absolute genius. Like, you know, with any one of these flashes, something could jump out. And that's what gives this scene the real scare factor that it does. And then when the jump scare does happen, because you've had so many flashes of the camera and the flashing of the camera is coming quite, you're getting quite used to it. You're used to something not jumping out. When something eventually does jump out, it takes you with double the surprise. Coming in at fifth place, we have Hide and Clap from The Conjuring. Similar to the previous one from Saw, um, it is a great example of building tension and then executing it in a well done jump scare. But I think this scene is probably slightly better than Saw. Once again, they slowly build the tension up in this scene with it getting more tense and more tense and more tense and more tense, with it finally erupting in probably one of the greatest jump scares in film history. You know the one, the... That one, yeah. Um, every time I kind of see that, even though I know what's coming, I still kind of jump a little bit, and I don't know what it is about the scene. I do think it is probably the tension that it builds. It builds the tension so incredibly well that you're genuinely on the edge of your seat by the time, you know, the <coughs> that happens. <laughs> um, that you genuinely, the first time you see this film, you will, <laughs> you will jump out of your skin. And I also think the way that the jump scare is filmed is just genius. The fact that she's got a match um, lit in front of her face and it, the camera turns and shows you what she's looking at. You would expect a jump scare to come from there and then from the jump then for the jump scare to appear from the darkness behind her is just filmmaking genius. And out with the physical jump scare itself, the full scene leading up to it is also really, really scary. The whole concept of hide and clap, which is just a fun childhood game being turned into this sinister thing that makes you genuinely terrified is just genius filmmaking. Coming in at number four might just be my favourite jump scare in film history and that is Ben's Boat from Jaws. Up until this point the film hasn't actually been that scary. It has been tense, it is more of a thriller um, up until this scene but this scene is the first scene in the film where it genuinely does go full-on horror. 
The fact that you know what state the characters are in, that they've been drinking, and then they've decided to go out and investigate this boat where a shark might be. Yeah, yeah, I think you're quite, I think you're starting to understand why this scene might be one of the, the most tense and scariest in film history. And this is one of the best examples of you genuinely aren't expecting a jump scare. You genuinely are not expecting a jump scare from this scene. I think you're more expecting, whilst it is quite scary him going down and inspecting the boat, you're honestly expecting not much to come of it. You're, you're expecting him to make a discovery that would later go on to progress the story. You aren't expecting a floating head to come out of a window with this horrifying shrieking noise that literally makes you jump out of your seat and run out the room. That is how effective this jump scare is. I've said it before and I'll say it again, Steven Spielberg needs to do more horror because just with this scene alone, you can see how effective it is and how great he is at horror filmmaking. He needs to make more horror films. He just, he just needs to. So now we're on to my top three and coming in at third place is Room 237 from my personal favourite horror film, The Shining. If you're talking about films that just ooze eeriness, The Shining is one of the best examples of that. Just from the way it's filmed and aesthetically, it just oozes this kind of eeriness that hasn't been captured in any other film for me. And this scene is one of the prime examples of that eeriness. It is just filmed in such a creepy and disturbing way. And when <laughs> the woman, the, the rather attractive woman, turns into this old, wrinkled, scabby, creepy woman, it is easily one of the most terrifying scenes in horror film history. Just the way the old woman looks is enough but the fact that you aren't expecting this at all just leads to such a terrifying revelation. And Jack Nicholson's reaction to what's happened is just one of the greatest reactions in horror film history and really resembles the reaction that the audience has just had to the scene as well. So coming in at runner up, we have the dinner party scene from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Where do I even start with this absolutely horrifying, terrifying, manic piece of horror cinema? The thing that makes Texas Chainsaw Massacre that scary is because this could happen. Like, say what you want about ghost stories and, I don't know, witch stories and whatever. Things that, like The Thing or something like that. Those films are scary but they won't happen. They'll never happen. This is scary because it could genuinely happen. There are people out there like this. You could bump into these people down the road. The sheer tone of mania that this scene creates alone, it, sh it should be illegal <laughs> in films to have your audience member this terrified. I, w the first time I watched this scene, I was so, so scared. And I was a grown-up. I wasn't even a kid when I saw this film. I was a grown-up, a full grown-ass man. <laughs> and I was absolutely terrified. From everything to the aesthetic of the house to the way the old grandpa is designed, there's just something off about the full thing that just really adds to the, the, the fear that you feel from this scene. I think the practical effects to make the grandpa look old in this kind of weird, kind of frail way. They look quite bad, but because they look bad, it actually adds to the tone of the film. There's something quite off about them. <laughs> it's just really creepy. In the same way that the the sister um, from Pet Cemetery is scary, this grandpa is even more scary. There's just something off about them. But coming in at number one, we have the entire final 15 minutes to Hereditary. So I would personally say, even though The Shining is my favourite horror film, Hereditary is easily the scariest film I've ever seen. And the entire final 15 minutes 
is easily some of the best horror filmmaking and most terrifying horror filmmaking ever put to screen. Just Tony Collette lurking in the background where it actually takes your eyes a bit of time to focus before you finally see her is terrifying enough. The scene also has some really, really effective jump scares where you think Tony Collette is in one place and then she bursts out from another. It is absolutely terrifying. And I think this scene is particularly effective because the full, I don't know, hour and 40 that's came before is a literal build up to this scene. It is just getting tenser and tenser and tenser and everything just erupts in this final 15 minutes, creating one of the most scariest scenes in film history. Well, in my opinion, the scariest scene in film history. And the performance of the guy who plays, oh, I can't remember his name, but the main guy in it, the, the kid, um, his performance is just so unreal. He looks genuinely terrified. And Tony Collette is fantastic from the banging her head rapidly against the door, which is just insane to the slowly cutting her head off with piano wire. Like, oh, it is absolutely terrifying. So thank you guys for watching this top 10 list. Please put down in the comments below your top 10 scariest scenes or even your number one. I love to read your comments and I try and respond to every single one. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe, all of that jazz. And I'll see you guys. What was that? That must have been nothing. I'll see you. I'm going to see what that is. I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.